So I designed this mounting camera holder to solve a camera tripod problem. I want to use my iPhone to record top-down table footage of my projects while I'm working from any angle, any position, but without it falling oh. over. Now, could I just buy one online? Yeah, for $20 or more, but I want to see if I can make one that's cheaper. Also, I want to turn this into a fun little project. So I'm going to start with the hardest part first, and that's the lockable ball socket mechanism. First of all, a ball socket allows for rotation in two directions, and it does this by, well, having a ball fit inside of a socket. It'll give the phone a good range of rotation for different use cases. These threads down here are meant to screw into a cap that closes the ball into the socket, keeping it in place. Careful sizing of the socket and threads is important to allow everything to fit together smoothly. The harder part of this mechanism is locking it in place. So my first idea is to use a custom design bolt to screw down on the ball and hopefully keep the ball from spinning. So let's test it out. I'll be using Bamboo Labs A1 printer who sponsored this video. After the print finished, I tested the idea. It seems like it's probably gonna work. So if I put this in there, it seems like it doesn't want to hold. Before abandoning this line of thinking, I try to add onto the bolt idea by adding on a piece of sticky neoprene rubber. Boom. Oh wait, is this perfect? No way. That is so close. We could try out the idea. Oh yeah, this ain't, oh, never mind, it is. So now I need to find another way, which I actually discovered online. I was curious if anyone else tried to make some mechanism like this before and someone actually did. So I printed their design to see if it actually works and it was very good at keeping the ball in its place by having the top cap screw down into the bottom piece until it tightens onto the ball itself. No need for bolts either, so it's actually quite ingenious. My idea is not too different from theirs. The difference is that my lower piece makes the ball fit just snugly into the socket, but if I want the socket itself to tighten into the ball, keeping it in place, then all I need to do is to make a platform that elevates the ball into this socket. So that's the plan for the second iteration. I also added ridges to the sides to increase grip when tightening similar to the ones on the example I found. Okay. Come on, that took me a lot of effort to try and... Uh... Oh yeah, there we go. I think we have our winner. Okay, so fortunately it seems that adapting this very helpful example right here into my prototype seemed to have worked. So now it's time to make the rest of the design. I simply extended the bottom piece to around 200 millimeters. This will act as the horizontal arm that allows us to reach in different directions above the table. Then I designed the hub, which will allow for the horizontal arm to fit through and get tightened into position with these bolts. A vertical arm at around 230 millimeters in length also comes through one of these holes as well. It comes with a clamp, which uses a bolt to tighten onto a table or a overhang or any surface really. Now, as I was designing the vertical arm, I pulled out a ruler to get the context of the dimensions and realized I would end up with a very small design, which would basically be useless. So I doubled the height as well as the horizontal arm's length by making another segment, which is able to be screwed onto the original segments. The A1 printer can only print parts around 256 millimeters long, but I need about double that. So I had to break up the design length for both height and reach into two segments. The print would take around half a day, uh, which I'll be printing overnight, so I'll need to make sure everything is set up well to prevent any large mishaps. I've never printed anything that would take this long before on the A1, so I did a little prayer and started the print. And the prayers have been answered. The A1 printed basically flawlessly. After removing the supports, which was very satisfying, there we go. I began to test out the pieces. Uh, essentially, all we're going to do now, tighten this. And as we can see there, it's not loose anymore. And then this clamps in. Very nice. Just like that. So I forgot to add a second copy of the hub bolt that keeps the arms locked in place. So I'm going to print another one. So now I can just do slice plate. Don't get that ready. Very nice. Just press print plate, uh, let it scan, stuff like that. Identify your printer and send. And that's all you need to do. Very nice. I don't want to do it too tight. All right. Let's see if this thing actually holds. Basically gonna tighten this now. Okay. 
think it holds. So I think the final test now is to actually put you guys on the end of this. There you are. Hopefully you guys can see yourself there. There you guys are. Not too bad. There's actually one more thing that I want to test out. And that is if I can hang it from here. Just like that. Boom. So now should be able to just put you guys right there. Now we can hang off of this. So let's see how that looks. Focus. Okay. So yeah, now we have uh, definitely a full view. And that's you guys right there. So this probably costed me about $10 worth of PLA, which is about probably half of the price of similar designs out there on the internet. Now, could I have just bought one online and be done with it? Yeah. Uh, probably would have been a wiser choice to do that. But I'd say turning this into a fun little project was worth it, at least for me.